mountain because any road will take you there. Well, that was my story, man. I was 14. To me, what my mom wanted was that I follow the rules, you know, led a good productive life, did well in school. All I cared about was being listened to, accepted, and admired. I wanted to fit in, man. My parents were divorced when I was two. I grew up without a dad, as Joe mentioned, and we moved every two years from one reason to another. So I was always a new kid in school. I was biracial, so I wasn't black enough. I wasn't white enough. I was too black. I was too white. I was always trying to struggle to fit in and feel like I was a part of, and that was hard on me. But my mom realized, because I didn't know where I was going, that there had to be some goals. So she asked me one day, what do you want to do when you grow up? I said, well, I want to be a pro football player. She goes, oh, okay. Now granted, I was about 280 pounds at 14 years old, was extremely lazy, was a DNF student, was using and selling drugs, and was a, a train wreck. But instead of going, what? That's ridiculous. But she goes, okay, tell me more about that. She was interested, right? She didn't judge, she didn't hold, uh, criticize over me, she, she embraced me with kind of open arms. Well, how do you do that? So, oh, we gotta go to college, and then they draft you, just give you a bunch of money. Oh, you just go to college, they draft you, just give you a bunch of money. Yeah, yeah, that's it. She's like, oh, man. She's like, well, when I was in college, you had to have good grades. You have to have good grades when you play football. Oh, yeah, you gotta have 2.0 and be eligible and blah, blah, blah. Okay, well, that's how you get to the pros. Well, how do you get to college? Oh, you play in high school, and they just give you a scholarship. Oh, that's interesting. They just give you a scholarship. Yeah, does everybody get one? Well, no, kind of just the best guys. Great support in there, just in college. It's important in high school too, right? So she's working me all the way back. And where she works me back to is, so what you're really saying when you cut school is that you don't actually want to be a pro football player. Isn't that right, Aaron? No, I'm like, huh? It's like, and every time you drink or get kicked out of school for fighting or this and that, what you're really saying is that you don't want to be a pro football player. Isn't that right, Aaron? Boom. That conversation changed the trajectory of my life because it <coughs> made me aware of the fact that my choices and corresponding actions had consequences. And for me, I was making poor choices that had negative consequences, and I needed to flip that around. As you want, reminds me of this, you come and achieve. When there is no pathway, you focus on what it is you can control, which is your resentment and your anger. What I needed and what my mom helped me create was a pathway to hope to be something bigger and better than I was. That's what attracted me to Voice to Men. Voice to Men is a pathway to hope. And once I had my signpost, then everything else was easy. It was just doing the hard work. And we don't have a whole lot of time. I'll go into some more things I've got. Everybody else worked hard, but I got that much better. So I got to Notre Dame. And I got to Notre Dame, and by the time I had gotten there, two years later, I went from a DNF student without any hope to being an A and B student and being uh, a, a United States All-American in high school and getting a full ride to the University of Notre Dame. It was two years removed from winning the national championship. When I got there, man, there was this little guy named Lou Holtz. He made it kid. And Lou Holtz is always telling stories and always trying to make examples of everybody, including yours truly, Aaron Taylor. And early on in camp, the freshmen would come in. We all had our names on our helmets because nobody knew who the heck we were, and things were moving fast. And I'll never forget, the first couple days of practice is just the freshmen, the incoming class. And he would make us like, he, like, we had whole drills where we would go over how to get into the huddle. Not the play where there's running left or right, but how to line up in the huddle. And we were all over the place because we all came from different systems, right? And at that time, we were sponsored by Adidas. And Adidas are the shoes that have the three stripes on the side. That's their branding. And he would always make it a point to get a stripe on a stripe. Aaron Taylor, get a stripe on a stripe. And I was always getting yelled at because the stripes were all misaligned. So man, I'm like, I don't know if I got what it takes to make it to college. I can't even light up in the dang huddle right, right? <laughs> so about two weeks later, when the whole team's together, one of the older vets was like, hey man, what, what's this deal with Holtz and lining up a stripe on a stripe? And, and that afternoon, we come into the meeting, and it's explained to us that why he did that was to get us to focus on the details. That if we were lining up in the huddle, paying particular attention to make sure that our stripe was on a stripe, then when we came to the line of scrimmage, we would be thinking about our landmark there, thinking about making a four versus a six inch step at a 45 degree angle or a lateral angle. That loopholes and good coaches and good businesses and good organizations do the little things really, really well.
and the little things make the difference. That's one of the lessons that football has taught me, among many. And as I got there at Notre Dame, there was this guy, number 50, that I could not block. And I struggled with my confidence again. Divorced parents, moving around a lot, biracial, trying to figure out where I was fitting in. And the first couple weeks of practice, man, this number 50 is throwing me around. And I literally, I called my mom a couple times in tears and said, Mom, I can't play at this level. This dude, number 50, is crushing me. He's so big, he's got arms like legs and legs like people with a, a mustache. Mom, he's got a mustache. <laughs> Who had a mustache? I mean, Doug does, but not in college. So, long story short, that number 50 was this guy, Chris Zorch, who that year would go on to win the Lombardi Trophy, the same trophy that I would win four years later. I was getting beaten by the best guy in football that year and didn't know it. But I stuck with myself and I worked hard and was able to put myself back in a position. And when we got to the NFL, I used to work Chris over when he was with the Bears, but that's another story for another time. We had a lot of success when I was at Notre Dame, and I, I attribute a lot of that to the people that, that stepped up and helped me grow as a person. And a lot of times coaches kind of step into that space as a father. Right? I was always looking to these older men with the adoration, good block, good read, good pull, good step, good job, good boy. Right? I didn't know it at the time, but that's what I was looking for, that leadership on what it took to be a man. And my position coach was this guy by the name of Joe Moore, who was a shop beer, Pittsburgh, steel town guy that would smoke, chain smoking meetings back then. We couldn't even see the projector film because it was all, all smoky in there. And we played this terrible game. And normally, after the game, you go and watch the film the following day. But not after that game. He sent us right out to the field. And he told us to tape our necks, to tape up our elbows, to tape up our knees, to tape everything on our body because we were going to need it. Uh-oh. I'll save you the gory details, but it was the hardest I'd ever been pushed in my life. He would go down. We did a three-on-one drill. Two defensive linemen, 300-pound guys on the ground, with another 250-pound guy behind him that was instructed to kick us in our heads, and our job was to simply block them all. Pretty simple, right? Well, you can imagine how that went. We were getting bulldozed over backwards, and he would look at me and say, Taylor, you got five more. Give me five more, Taylor. And I'd go, ugh, ugh, ugh. Like, the more noise you make, you think that he would have sympathy on you, right? Kind of wrap it up, not with Joe. And I'd do my five, and I'd be so tired and go, <laughs> five more, and he'd make me do another five and another five, and another five. And this went on and on, not just with me, but all the way down the line. So fast forward to my senior year, and, and I'll end with this. We all kind of had a rite of passage where at the end of your senior year for playing for Joe Moore for four years, he would take you out for burgers and beer. And you'd all kind of be able to tell. It was a fun and festive event. We survived. And I was a captain by then, and you know, had won some awards and some accolades. And, um, I think I, I was always kind of one of Joe's favorites because I never quit and I never gave up and I would get choked up when I talked about this part. But he pulled me aside and said, do you remember that day we did the toughness drill? And I'm like, yeah, how could I forget that? He said, you know why I did that? Now I won't tell you what I answered, I said, because you're a blankety blank. And he laughed and he said, the reason I did that was because I wanted you to know that when you were tired and didn't think you had any more to give, at some point in the game, in a meaningful game, maybe later that season or in the NFL, that you always had five more to give. Because your brain was telling you in those moments that you couldn't do it anymore. You didn't have it. You gave everything you had, and you thought you were done. That's the, all you could do. And then you gave me five more, and then another five, and another five. He said, Aaron, I wanted you to know that any time in your life as a father, as a husband, as an employee, or wherever you're at, when you're facing adversity, that you always have five more inside you. That's what the game of football taught me, was that I mattered, that I made a difference, the details matter. It gave me hope to strive for something that was bigger than myself. And then no matter what, no matter how hard it gets, that I always had five more to give. Thank you.